Let's in 7.4, please. <laughs> Okay, lesson 7-4. We have talked about how to multiply when there are exponents, and now we're going to talk about how do we divide when there are exponents. Okay? So normally if we multiply and the bases are the same, we keep the bases and do what with the exponents? Add them. So now, translate that to division. If the bases are the same, we're going to keep the bases the same, but we're going to subtract the exponents. Okay? So, dividing powers with the same base. To divide powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. Okay? Um, I lost my pen I was using. There we go. So, the example there, a to the m times a to the n is a to the m minus n. Or maybe a better example, 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 2nd. Keep the base of 2. 6 minus 2 is 4. The other thing we will practice working with again today is raising a quotient to a power. And that just says if you have a power out here, it goes on everything inside. Kind of like what we did yesterday, right? The power out there went on everything inside. It's like here, x over y raised to the 5th. 5 goes on the x, 5 goes on the y. So those are the two things we are going to practice with today. I'm just going to jump right in. So simplify the expression. y to the 5th divided by y to the 4th. You guys agree or disagree with Mikaeli? You want to agree with that? Because what do we do? We keep the base the same, right? Divide, so we keep the base the same, and then we're going to subtract. 5 minus 4 is y to the first. What's an even better way to write y to the first? Just y. And math Excel, I, mean, I don't know, math Excel might be mean and count y to the first wrong, so. You don't like how what? There are advantages and disadvantages. There really are. So, Okay, second example. D to the 3 halves divided by D to the ninth. Okay. I mean, and essentially, what are we going to do? We're going to keep the bases the same, right? And then we're going to subtract... 3 halves minus 9. In order to subtract fractions, they have to be fractions, right? Mm -hmm. 9 is a fraction. Is 9 over 1. What do we need in order to subtract fractions? Common denominator. What is the common denominator between 1 and 2? 2. So... How do we make this 1 and 2? Multiply by 2. What we do to the denominator? We do to the numerator, right? So then we're going to have 3 over 2 minus 18 over 2. What is 3 over 2 minus 18 over 2? So 3 minus 18, negative 15, and officially I didn't write it all these times, D. So it's D to the over 2, D to the negative 15 halves. Am I done? No, you got to do the last thing while you still. Okay. The directions are going to say right with the positive exponents. So how do we get a negative exponent to come positive? Move it to the denominator. One over d to the fifteen halves is how I would say that. However you want to say it, right? Fifteen over two, fifteen halves. I'm not picky about there. 
Okay. So next example, we have two variables. K to the sixth, J to the second, over K, J to the fifth. Now, what do we have to do when there's multiple variables? Yeah, combine the like pieces. So the idea here is K goes with K and J goes with J. So as we look at the K's, it's division, so we're going to subtract the exponents. And so when we do that, it's going to be K to the six minus one and six minus one is K to the fifth. J's two minus five, so negative three. So then I have K to the fifth, J to the negative third. Can I be done? No. No. Why not, Jacob? Hmm? Where am I going to take that negative exponent? To the bottom. To the bottom. What about K to the fifth? So K to the fifth is going to stay on top. J to the negative third goes to the bottom and becomes J to the positive third. Okay? Positive exponents stay on top. Negative exponents have to move to the bottom. Okay, so this is coming back to us. Or we're learning it. I don't know. I figure some of this stuff you guys have learned. And once you see it, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I figure some of this other stuff as we go through this year, we'll be like, oh, I've learned that before. What? But I'm kind of figuring it's going to be a mix. Does that sound about right? Okay. Okay, a to the negative third, b to the seventh, over a to the seven halves, b to the second. So what are we going to do here? Okay. A's are going to go with A's, and B's are going to go with B's. What are we doing with the A's? Subtract the exponents. So negative 3 minus 7 halves. I'm going to go ahead and write out the next part, and then we'll come back and do the next part. What are we going to do with the B's? Subtract the exponents. What do we know about the B's? And 7 minus 2 is 5. I think I'll get the easy one out of the way, right? Okay. Negative 3 minus 7 halves. That negative 3 needs to become a fraction. So if it's negative 3 over 1, how do you subtract 3 over 1 and 7 halves? Common denominator of? 2. So, how does this 1 become a 2? Multiply by 2. So that means on top, the 3 is going to multiply by 2. So negative 6 halves minus 7 halves. Keep the denominator of 2. What is negative 6 minus 7? Negative 13 over 2, d to the 5th, Lily, can you tell me what I have to do to finish this? Mm -hmm. 
Put what on the bottom? Yeah. A to the negative 13 halves goes to the bottom. What about B to the fifth? Yeah. So this is going to become the B to the fifth over A to the 13 halves. Okay. Good news. The next one doesn't have fractions. I like it. What are you starting by doing, Jacob? Besides just staring at the problem. Okay. So if the four and the four are the same, what are your thoughts there? The bases are the same, and we're dividing. Oh, it's subtracting. So we're subtracting, right? Yeah. So 4 minus 4 zero. is going to be x to the 0. What do you know about anything raised to 0? It's 1. Okay. What about y's? That's a negative number. What do we do with those negative numbers? Well, okay, well, you could, you could move them to the bottom. However, well, it'd be moving one to the bottom, one to the top, but you still have to subtract it. I would just jump right to the subtracting. You guys can always use a calculator if you get stuck on the adding and subtracting. Negative one minus negative five. No. I teach this as keep, change, opposite. And so keep, change, flip would work. Negative 1 plus 5 is really y to the fourth. So we have a 1. We have a y to the fourth. What about z's? Eight and the invisible one. So 8 minus 1 is going to give us z to the 7th. Now, if you put this all together, our x is canceled to be 1. We have y to the 4th, z to the 7th. What's the best way to write this that we know will make math Excel happy? Well, my point is, math is all going to want this one. No. Oh, yeah, no. Probably not. So they're probably just going to want y to the fourth, z to the seventh. That's my guess. Okay? Okay, get what you need, flip to the back side there. I remember how many we have on the back side. No. Do we need to do all of them now? So. Now, we need to do some of these, though, because we, ha we haven't done any of these power to a powers yet. Okay, so we do need to do some of them, but we don't have to do all of them. You're right. Okay, 4 over x to the third, raise to the second. No. This 2 that is outside the parenthesis goes with, goes with the 4 and goes with x to the third. So with the 4, this just becomes 4 to the 2nd. With the x, it's x to the 3rd raised to the 2nd. Do you remember from yesterday, how do we do a power raised to a power? No? If the bases are the same and we can see two x's, we add them. 
But so when it's a power raised to a power, we're going to multiply. And 3 times 2 is 6. Now, my guess would be don't stop here. Go one more step. Yeah, 4 squared is 16 over x to the 6th. W to the fifth raised to the third, excuse me, W to the fifth over four raised to the third. My question is what's that three go with? W to the fifth and the four. What's W to the fifth raised to the third? Multiply them, five times three. 15. What's 4 raised to the third? 6. Okay. Okay. Kylie okay. okay. grabbed the calculator, which is a smart move. I mean, do by all means. 4 times 4 is 16, and then times 4 is 64, which I'm going to write it as 4 to the third for the moment. I didn't realize I hadn't written that yet, but W to the 15th over 64 if we take it all the way. Okay. Curious about the next one. A to the seventh over A to the fifth raised to the third. There's two different directions we could take with this, so I'm curious what you guys will do. Just be like over Okay. So one option. The three goes with everything, right? Yeah. So then A to the seventh raised to the third, multiply. A to the twenty first. A to the fifth raised to the third. A to the fifteenth. But we're not allowed to stop there. Think with me. Oh, the bases are the same. Uh, um, no. Yep. Yep. The bases are the same, so we're going to subtract. So we're going to keep A and do 21 minus 15, which is A to the 6th. Good. Oops. Sorry. Off the screen a little bit. Okay. 3x over 2y raised to the 4. What about that power of 4? Okay. Goes with everything. What is everything? Good job. It doesn't just go with 3x, it goes with 3 and the x. It doesn't just go with 2y, it goes with 2 and the y, right? So it's going to go on each of those pieces. So if you want to, you can write it as 3 to the 4th, x to the 4th, over 2 to the 4th, y to the 4th. So you have to remember that it goes on everything inside those parentheses, each factor. Um, you're going to grab the calculators probably to do the math. 3 to the 4th? 81. X to the 4th. Over 2 to the 4th? 16. Y to the 4th. Okay, one more trick before I'll allow us to be done. Notice the next three problems have 
a negative exponent, right? Now, a couple different ways you can do this. My suggestion to get rid of the negative, what's a negative exponent cause us to do? It causes us to flip it, right? So here's mine. Since this negative 2 goes on everything, my recommendation is flip the fraction. So instead of a over 5b, make it 5b over a. And now since I flipped that fraction, instead of it being raised to negative 2, make it raised to positive 2. Does that trick work okay for you guys? You like that, Jacob? Yeah. Be filling in the notes with me. That'll keep you focused. Okay, so that's my recommendation. When you see a big old negative exponent, a whole fraction, flip the fraction, and now use the power of 2. What's that power of 2 go with? Everything. 5, the B, and the A. So if it goes with a 5, that's going to be 5 to the second, B to the second, over a to the second. And what do we know about 5 to the second? 25. 25, b to the second, a to the second. Okay. Is that a good place to stop or you want one more? Think we're good? Well, if you want to stop right there, get working on homework is what I'm going to say. I think we still have, what, three more lessons left? I think tomorrow I might take a day and just kind of do like a in-class, like a worksheet or something maybe to kind of just practice all the um, exponent rules. Okay, so we might try that tomorrow. Hold on a second. I just realized I haven't stopped my recording. Why don't you go get it real quick?